Hello and welcome to CPH session 19, Inferential Statistics, Making Comparisons and Conclusions from Data. This is part F, the paired t-test. In this section, uh, we'll learn how to appropriately use a de dependent t-test, two sample t-test. After that, I'll show you the steps uh, that we use to calculate a t-statistic and the resulting p-value. So as I showed you in part E, we have three different types of t-tests that we can choose from. So if your two sample groups are not mutually exclusive or they're related, then we should be using the paired or the dependent t-test that we're talking about here. Most commonly, paired t-tests are used in before and after studies. Uh, or they might be used to compare two different methods of measurement of the same variable within the same participants. So if a two-sample paired t-test, our null hypothesis would be one of these two forms. If it's a before and after study, then our null hypothesis is that the mean value before is the same as after the intervention. Or if we're comparing methods, then we would say that the mean score of method A is the same as the mean score that we get from method B. And so if we look at the difference between the two, if we subtract before and after or method A and method B, we get the mean difference. And the mean difference then we would assume in our null hypothesis is equal to zero. And then from this, we can compute our t-statistic. Um, and we do that by looking at the mean difference of our two samples. So the before and after, we compute a difference, and we compute the mean of that, and we compare that to our the null hypothesis mean difference, and then we finally we compute the standard error of our differences. And we plug it into this formula shown here to get our t-statistic. And I'll show you this in an example where we took the blood pressure of women. There were 10 women who were not taking oral contraceptives, and then uh, we began a regimen of oral contraceptive, and after three months, we went back in and looked at the blood pressure of those same women. So this would be a before and after study, looking at the effect on blood pressure of the oral contraceptive. And so let's look at what we do to follow through the steps of our paired t-test. Here we have the, the women's ID numbers, and we can see that here's their uh, blood pressure before, uh, BP1, measured in millimeters mercury, and then we have BP2, the blood pressure after taking the oral contraceptive for three months. So in step one, first we decide what kind of t-test we're going to use. So we decide that we need to use a paired t-test because we're measuring the same variable before and after within the same participants. We'll also choose to use a two-tailed version because we're specifically look interested if there's a change, not necessarily if there's an increase or a decrease. And so our null hypothesis becomes that there is uh, no real difference in before and after. So the next thing is step two, which is checking, uh, assembling our data set and checking for assumptions. Um, so in this case, we actually have to create a new data set that is our differences. Uh, so we look at the, we just subtract the uh, after blood pressure from the before, and we can look. And for example, we see that the blood pressure in the first participant decreased by two millimeters mercury and so on. So now we're going to use this data set uh, as our differences data set, and that'll be the one that we use within the t-test computations. The next thing we have to do is check our assumptions. Um, because our sample size is small, is only 10 people, we need to double check that our data is uh, approximately normally distributed. So what I did here is I uh, can check it visually using a histogram. So I made a histogram of the differences data set uh, and we look at whether or not this data is normally distributed. We don't need to check the two original data sets, the, the set of before and the set of before uh, after blood pressures, uh, because in fact it is possible that the those two data sets could be non-normal distributed and then produce a beautifully normally distributed 
differences data set. It is possible. And so we're only concerned with the differences data set. And so that's the only histogram I need to look at. And if I look here, uh, it does look close enough. If we weren't sure, we could check using the quantitative measures. So in step three, we compute the actual t statistic. Uh, so the first thing we do is look at the mean difference. So we see that the, the mean of the differences is an increase of 4.8 millimeters mercury. And the next thing we do is we compute the standard deviation of the differences, and we find that that is 4.7 millimeters mercury. And so from that and the sample size, we can get the standard error of the, the differences, and we see that uh, that is 1.5 millimeters mercury, and we plug those numbers into our T statistic formula. And when we do that, we find that uh, we have a T statistic value of 3.2. Finally, we uh, take that t statistic, we plug those values into our uh, two-sided, two-sample dependent t-test, and our uh, statistics program gives us a p-value of 0 0.011. And so we can interpret this, and we can say that if the real difference before and after taking this oral contraceptive is a zero increase in blood pressure, then we would expect that there is about a 1% 0.1% chance of getting the results that we got, uh, which was an increase of 4.8 millimeters of mercury, or more extreme on either side, meaning an increase of 4.8 uh, millimeters of mercury or more, or a decrease of 4.8 millimeters of mercury or more. And so finally, we ask ourselves, can we reject the null hypothesis? Well, it depends on our alpha value. And I didn't tell you uh, but I had chosen 0 0.05 as my significance level, the alpha value. And so since we use that alpha value 0 0.05, uh, then in fact, yes, we can reject the null hypothesis because our p-value of 0 0.011 was less than our significance level. And so therefore what we can say is it's unlikely that we would see this result in the blood pressure increase or change if in fact there were no real differences from before to after. And the last thing, uh, I just want to throw in one more sanity check that statisticians like to use at this point after computing a p-value, and it's called checking for effect size. Um, in fact, there are many ways that we can check for effect sizes, and, and those include Cohen's D, Pearson's correlation coefficient R, and also the odds ratio. I'll show you here how to compute R, or Pearson's R, from a test statistic because it's fairly easy. We can use this formula that I show here that only requires the T statistic and degrees of freedom. When we input our values into that formula, we find an effect size of 0 0.7. And R goes from 0 to 1, and generally we consider it an R value greater than 0 0.5 to have a large effect. So we would say that this study had a large effect. So what that means is that not only are our results statistically significant because our p-value was low, but uh, because we have a large effect size, we can say that we have a subst substantive finding. So finally, how can we do this in Excel? Well, we can use the t.test function. It just requires four different inputs. Uh, first, we need to give it the two data sets. So in this case, we give it the original before blood pressures and also the full set of the after blood pressure data sets. So all 10 values in each case. We would highlight them in Excel, give it to them. Then we give it the value 2, meaning that we want to do a two-tailed version, and we tell it type 1, uh, which if you look up in the manual, it tells us that 1 is referring to a paired or dependent t-test, which is what we want. And when we hit return, we'll get the p-value directly from it, and we would get 0 0.011 from our results. If you wanted to compute the t-statistic outright, then you would need to use the formula that I showed you earlier. You can do that by hand or do that also in Excel. And so that's it for part F. and part G, I'll show you how to do the same thing, but for an independent t-test.